What is going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to make a very basic lava tutorial. So I will go forward and make this into a better sort of lava material. Um, I will have one that's going to make lava come through cracks and one that's going to make it more dynamic where it actually bumps up and looks a bit more like lava. However, that one might come out a little bit more cartoony, but it still will come out a bit more dynamic and allow you to manipulate it a lot better. So today I'm just going to show you how to do this one. So the first thing you need to going to get is your lava texture. So you can grab it yourself off Google by just typing in something like lava seamless texture. If you can't find one um, that's kind of like this one, I will upload a link so you can grab that one. And if you want a normal map for it like I have, you can just use, if you've seen the previous story, you can use Endu, you can use Quixel, and you can use Crazy Bump to just sort of quickly grab sort of a normal map for it. This isn't necessary because it is glowing quite a bit, so it's quite hard to see the normals. But if you do want that extra bit of detail, you can do that. Right, so the first thing we need to do is obviously get our new material. So I've got one here. Let's call it. Let's rename there. Lava test. Right, so I have one set up here. So I'll just throw it onto here, throw it onto here. So if we jump into that, first thing we need to actually get is our texture here. So if we load that up. If I get over here, minimize, we could just drag in those materials. Okay. So the first thing I did when setting this up is I connected it to a free constant so I could change the color slightly. So if I jump into here, I have this color. So those are the values I'm using. I then, I believe, multiply it together. Then I should apply that. Okay, there we go. Now, if I like preview that, you can see I can literally change this to any color I want now. So if I change it to green, you can have green plasma lava, whatever you want. All right. And then this literally just gets connected up to base color. So we will need to put a panel on this eventually, but that is pretty much the base color sorted. So you can select all that, you can press C, and you can just call that base color. So the next thing we're going to need to do is sort out the emissive color. So this one requires a little bit of extra nodes because I made it so you can manipulate a bit more. So those darker bits you see in here, I'm going to make it so you can make them come out a bit more and look a bit more like they're a bit rockier, a bit thicker. So to do that, first thing we need to do is get a, a subtract. There we are. And we want a one constant just connected to that. So one left click to get that one constant. And then we want our base color to A, that to B. So we're going to leave the value at zero for now. And later on, when we do change the value, you'll see it change. So the next thing we want is cheap contrast. So we can differ between the lighter and darker areas of it. So obviously, like I said, the darker areas are going to be the rockier parts that you're going to want to make pop a bit more to look like they're rock. And the lighter parts is going to be where the lava just stays as lava. All right. So in here, I just connected that upstairs. So this controls not only the subtract, but the contrast. So you don't want to go too over the top with that when you're changing it. So we can change that to, I don't know, contrast or thickness or something like that. All right. Then we want to add node to there then we want a value here and the reason I had this is because I was having trouble making it actually go between the values I wanted so this pretty much sort of makes it stay completely white and doesn't change it at all unless I change the thickness value and the reason I've done a one minus is because I always like my values when I change it in my parameters to go between zero and one Otherwise, I'd be, it'd be going between minus one and zero, and I don't really like going between those values. I just like it a little bit neater. So now if we grab a clamp and throw that in, we move all this back. So right now, all of this isn't actually doing anything. I'll show you what it does later. So if we then multiply this, actually, first thing we're going to want to do here is we need to set up a glow. So if I um, go back into my project, if you pay attention, we can make the glow stronger. If you pay attention, it does glow slightly. And with my um, auto exposure, it's kind of hard to see, but it is glowing a little bit, and it's just a nice little effect. So we jump back into here. So what we need, and I should glow in a different tutorial, so what we need is a time. We need a sign. A 
can't remember the values I had for them, so let me just check. So I had five on this. So basically the sign is going to be how long it's going to take to do the whole glow. Because if we had it like at 0.5, it would take half a second for it to glow to max and the glow to minimum, the, the minimum values. All right, so now we divide it. And if I hold D, left click, if you get a divide, yep. And we're dividing it by two. And then we're adding 0.5. Now, if I just preview that, you'll be able to see it doesn't quite drop to no glow. And because I've divided by two, it's only going between like 0.5 and 1.5. And it's pretty much just like makes it have a slight glow, not over the top. You can make this more over the top. If you divide it by less, it'll be a bit stronger. If you add more values, it'll be its lowest minimum value will be uh, like lighter. But I will. So now we need to connect this to a lerp. So yeah, this is all set up so you guys could change it to whatever you want, really. All right. Let me move all this back a little bit. We can actually connect those normals up now because they're not really doing anything. We just need a panel node on it later. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to make the roughness. And the way I did the roughness, so I just put this in. Put that there. Added about 0 0.4 that's a 5 there you go we put it into roughness so to preview that you can see it's just going between those values and if I turn up the contrast and stuff so just turn up to like 0 0.3 and turn up the thickness you can see those values there okay so if we just take these down. I'll actually set these to about 0 0.3 and this one to about 0 0.4. See, we actually have some thickness. Cool. Now, what we need to do is we need to sort out the emissive color. Ooh, it looks really weird at the moment. Cool. So now if we go into multiply and if we clamp that down just so we don't go beyond the values we want to go between 0 and 2. Put that into our emissive color. So now if we... I actually need, actually, to multiply this, put that into there. And then where we have our result here, where we change the color of it, we want that in the value here. Because what we want to do... So we want to multiply them together. That way, if I do change the color, we want it to put that emissive color sort of like... Like, we, if we wanted to change the color of the texture to green, we also want the emissive to change the green. Otherwise, it's not going to correlate with each other properly. All right. So now I want to set my panner. And you can set up a texture coordinate. And what this allows you to do is tile the texture as much as you want, when you want. I believe it's O, no, U left click, U left click to get that one. Connect to a multiply, connect to a value, set that as default one, convert it, and we're going to call it tile. And then we connect that to our panner. So the panner is what's going to control the movement of the magma, of course. That's there, connect that to our normals. All right. So I think. Roughness. Yeah, so what we're going to do. So I did that bit wrong. We don't want the lerp connected to that. We're that just connecting. Because we obviously don't want it to. Um, we don't want the roughness to glow. We don't want it to get shinier for no reason. I did think that sign was wrong there. All right, so now we need to set a value to the panel to, of course, make it move. So depending on how much you want to move and what direction, you'll just change these values. Let's say 0.1 in the X. Like that. Click Apply. And you can sort this out to make it less messy by just selecting it, pushing C, calling that like glow, calling all this like roughness and emissive you can 
can call this your panner, whatever. You can sort it out to make it just look a bit neater. Click apply, and then in the engine, that should all be set up. Come over here. And now, the reason I set up those values where I like the thickness and the contrast is now if I create material instance and throw that on, what I could do is I could jump in there and I can tick these boxes. And if we want it to like go like that and make it thicker, we can make those parts not have any glow in it and the shine. If you make it too strong, as you can see, it's a bit less detailed. But you can mess around with those to make it look like that. You can tile it more. And if you want to just set it back to zero and not have any sort of rocky parts, you could just do that as well. So yeah, that's how you make a basic lava or magma material. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any suggestions for a future tutorial, please leave it in the comments. Thank you very much and bye-bye.